In this episode, we're going to talk about some pathogens. We're here at Santa Clara County Public Health Laboratory, and this is Brandon in the Lab. Some of the most common tests we perform here are a lot of the sexually transmitted infection, gonorrhea testing, syphilis testing, chlamydia testing. We also test for HIV. We also do a lot of enteric testing, foodborne outbreak types of organisms, salmonella, E. coli 0157, and then of course, SARS-CoV-2 and influenza. One of the things that differentiates viruses from bacteria are viruses need a host cell to grow. They can't grow on just a standard auger. So you have to inoculate those on some type of cell line. And then that takes two to three days for you to see any type of growth. And then you have to run an assay to determine if it's there. Whereas a molecular assay, you can do it from directly from the patient's sample into a polymerase chain reaction and directly look for the nucleic acids of that pathogen. So you don't need to wait two to three days. We work with other public health officials, mainly our communicable disease department. They usually notify us of a possible outbreak, whether it's possible foodborne contamination or maybe someone got sick at a restaurant and they'll notify us that there's a possible outbreak. We'll collaborate with other laboratories and then perform our testing to see if any of the samples are related. Once we determine relatedness, then we respond back to our communicable disease department and let them know whether or not these patients have links in their samples. There's a lot of work being done on genomic sequencing. And the reason I find that interesting is because the amount of intelligence you can gain from sequencing a pathogen. Uh, you, you can basically identify any type of antiviral resistance, antibiotic resistance, relatedness. There's just so much detail you can find out in regards to genomic sequencing. And that's what I find super interesting right now.